What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video in the Learn Linux series. Sorry for the delay. Got a, life got a little busy, but today we will go on and learn about how to search through files and find the information that you need within your files on your system. So in order to do that, we're going to use a very useful tool called grep. And if we open up the man page here, man grep, you'll see that there is a ton of stuff in here. Uh, but we're going to just go over some basic stuff. You'll notice that there are different functionalities with how you can use grep. Um, particularly, you can just use it the tool as is, or you can use various forms of regular expressions as defined here in this section right here. Um, these are things that you, you will learn about later on or on your own through research. Um, essentially, a regular expression is a way of defining a pattern that you want to search for. That is a common uh, computer slash software engineering technique. We will use some simple regular expressions that I will write, but I will not be teaching regular expressions. I will leave some resources down below that you can use to learn that by yourself. One great video, especially by my friend engineer man that he created a while ago, which you can go ahead and watch and implement here. All right, so other than the different modes that you can use grep with, we have some flags for manipulating how output is shown. So for example, we can see here that we have uh, ignore case. So if you want to do a search and not care about uppers and lowers, you can use that. Maybe you want to search for something that doesn't match what you're searching for. So if you're searching for everything in a file that isn't a fruit, let's say you have a list of fruits as your regular expression, then you will have only the things that are like vegetables, for examples. Additionally, we have other options such as count, so we can see how many matches we found, for example. That can be pretty useful sometimes. Other things that we have here are these options right here for searching for only the file name or returning only the file name for what you search for. So maybe you have a list of files that you're searching through and you only want to know the file names. You don't care about the actual matches. Maybe on the opposite side, you, you don't want the, the file names. You don't want to see um other information related to the line and context of what's matching you just want the actual match itself for what you looked for additionally there's some other options which you can use another option that we will be using in this tutorial is the dash r flag so if i search for that you'll see here that it's the recursive flag and it will basically search through di several directories so maybe you have a uh, i don't know 10 subdirectories and you want to search through all of it to search for certain, a certain pattern uh, you can use this option here, and we'll show examples of this throughout this video. So here in my operating system, I've created a little directory called files. And if I enter into files, you'll see that I have this file ips.txt. It's got some IP addresses, some random text, and I have this file pi.txt. And it has a bunch of random uh, strings as well as a bunch of types of pies. So First, we're going to start with the pies, and we'll use that as a basic example. Let's say I only want to search for lines that match the word pi. So I can do grep. I can put my search pattern in sort of quotation marks, so pi. And then I put the name of the file, so pies.txt. And you will see that I return all the different kinds of pies. Another option that I have here, and it's the least preferred option, but it is something that you can do. Uh, you can do cat on pi.txt and you can pipe it into the grep command i believe we spoke about that in another video and just use your pattern so grep pi and obviously you don't need the file name because we're just passing the output of pi.txt into the grep command and we will see we get the same results but let's take a quick look at pi.txt and you notice here that we missed a match raspberry pi has caps and that does not show up in our list up here so Let's clear our screen here. And let's use the option that we learned about in the man page. So in the man page, we have this dash I command, which is ignore case, looking ignoring the uppercase and the lower cases. And so if we do grep dash I, uh, pi again, and pi.txt, you will see that now we have all different kinds of pies, including our Raspberry Pi uh, in that list. Now, what if I was back here in my home directory and I didn't want to really I didn't know where the different kinds of pies were I just wanted to see all the files within the directory called files that contain the word pie 
if I just did grep pi and then the name of the directory, it's going to say files as a directory. So how do we deal with that? That's where we get into that, that shark command that we read about earlier. Again, you can go back to the man page and you can see we have dash lowercase r and dash uppercase r. I tend to use dash uppercase r just for muscle memory because it also follows symbolic links, um, a concept which we will talk about at another point. Um, but lowercase r works just fine as well. It just won't, means it won't follow symbolic links. Dash capital R will cover all your bases for the most part. So if I do grep dash capital R, our pattern again, pi and files, you will see it will tell me the name of the file here, files pi.txt, and then it'll tell me the matches for that file right next to it. Now, what if I didn't care about the different kinds of pies? I just wanted to see which files had a pie in it. I can use this in combination with the L command, and the L command returns just a list of file names, and you will see it just tells me that files slash pi.txt has a match to our pattern, which is a pie. Uh, and if you read again the man page for that, it, it tells you exactly files with matches. If you wanted the opposite, files that did not contain the word pi, you would just use capital L. So same, same concept, recursive, uh, and the words that do not contain, or the files that do not contain the word pi, and that will tell us that files slash ips.txt does not contain the word pi. Uh, notice how I'm chaining these commands together. This is, the, these, flags, these flags for a command, you can put them together with certain programs, and grep is one of those that will allow you to, to do that. Most GNU tools will allow you to chain flags like this. If I just wanted to do this on pi slash files, pi.txt, I could, but it doesn't make sense to use it by itself. It kind of defies the whole point. And in the same way we did before, let's say my file, I didn't know if it was uppercase or lowercase pi, I didn't care. I can do use dash R, I for insensitive, and L for list, and use pi, whoops, typo, files, and it'll tell me, again, the same result. Uh, so that's how you would use those commands together. Now, let's go back into our directory here. Let's say I wanted to get all the lines instead of pi.txt that do not contain the word pi. How would I do that? So if I type grep-v and my pattern, pi.txt, it'll list me all of the lines that do not contain pi in it. Obviously, we got Raspberry Pi here because it uses a capital P, so we can just combine that with our I flag here for insensitive, and there we go. None of these words contain pi. And this can be useful sometimes when you are simply just trying to figure something out within, let's say, a log file or trying to just verify that something is within the place that it's supposed to be. There's a lot of reasons why you can use this tool. So what else can we do with this? So let's say I open up my pi.txt and I add here blueberry and strawberry pi. And then I grep for blueberry in pi.txt. I get here blueberry pi and strawberry pi. No, I only want to see the word blueberry for my match. So if I do grep dash O, blueberry, and then again my file name, you will see I will only get blueberry back. Maybe I only want blueberry and, it will literally say blueberry and. If I want the whole line, I just remove that, that dash O and I will get the entire line match. Very simple concept. So next, let's use the regular expression functionality in grep. And we can use grep g for that, and that just stands for extended regex. It just gives you some additional functionality uh, within the regular expressions. Um, and let's just say we want to match, at the beginning of the string, anything that, and space and pi, close that, and pi.txt. And you'll see, again, we'll match all of the lines uh, that have pi in them. So obviously, this isn't very useful. You still get the same samples as if we hadn't used the regex. Um, but let's say you want to do something more advanced. We'll use the Perl regex, which is another form of regex which is supported by grep. And that allows us to do this little thing here, which makes pi case insensitive. And now you'll see that I don't have to use the dash i command to get the Raspberry Pi to show up here in my output because it's saying pi is supposed to be in case insensitive. Obviously, don't do this. Just use the built-in flag. 
as we did before, grep dash i, pi, pi.txt. Oh, and you don't have to put the pattern always between quotes. That's that, if you're going fast, this will work just as fine. Now let's do a more useful example. So here I have ips.txt. Now, I only want the IP addresses from this list. Let's use grep dash e, extended regex, and let's do a simple regular expression. Uh, this is not going to tell me whether this is a valid IP address or not, but it'll at least extract numbers that have the same format. So we'll say digits zero through nine. So any number between zero and nine, and it repeats between one and three times, as every IP address will usually do. Uh, and then we have a period. Um, you can see here 10.4.2.5. So there's three periods and three numbers, and then a fourth number at the end. Here you can see I'm escaping it with this backslash because the dot can mean something else within regex without escaping it. Um, and then I'm going to say that's one group and that one group repeats three times. So again, a repetition of digits between zero and nine it can be between one and three digits followed by a dot. And then finally a fourth digit at the end that's between zero and nine. And that repeats that number is between one and three digits long. And then let's grab ips.txt. And you can see here that now I got only the IP addresses from this list. Again, it doesn't mean that it's a valid IP address, but at least we have a, the IP addresses from this list. Now we have this connection successful part here. Let's get rid of that. Remember earlier we used the O command. So if we use the O command, guess what? We have our list here of IP addresses. We can redirect that as we learned in one of the file manipulation lessons and to a file called connections.txt. And now we can go ahead forward this to let's say our networking team or whatever it is for further analysis, maybe your security team, uh, whatever you may want to do with those IP addresses. You can sort them, get, maybe you have repeating IP addresses, get certain unique amounts. This is the power of Linux. And again, same way you can do with um, any other tool as we've explored before, you can get this output and instead of directing to a file, you can pipe it into something else. So as I said before, you can sort them, not really gonna be very helpful here, but let's say if I open up this file here and I have 1.1.1 again, a second time, I can say this, it'll sort it. Now you see we have two entries and we can get only the unique entries. And you can see here that we have only the entries one time instead of repeated. Remember we had the dash C command earlier, so we can use that as well. And you can see here that we have five findings within grep. Um, or maybe we can use unique dash C and see, okay, we saw the 1.1.1 IP address twice. There's a lot of powerful things you can do from getting your, your data cleaned up using your grep command and then redirecting it to somewhere else. That's all I have for, for you guys today. I hope this is helpful. As always, just practice. Um, what, a good way to practice this stuff is just to go through files and look at what's in there and practice writing grep patterns for them. For them. So like if we look at the password file, so etsy pass wd, that is a standard place where user accounts are stored within Linux. Um, and you can read more about how this is formatted if you read man5, five, 5 standing for the fifth man page, uh, pass wd. And you'll read here uh, at the top, it tells you Etsy password, it contains one line for each user account with seven fields limited by colons. These fields are login name, encrypted password, UID, GID, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so you can now look at this and say, okay, if I have this file here, at the end it says that the, the last entry is the shell for the user. So I only want users that have the, the bin bash shell. So I can say grep bin bash, whoops, etsy pass wd and you will see that the root user which is the user we have right now and a second user i've created here called k diaz are users that have the slash bin slash bash um shell and of course we can then do other things like we just only do that that's not very useful but this is this is how you're going to learn just by trying different things and looking for different patterns anyways that's all for today have a great day